In this GarageBand for iPhone quick tip, we're going to be looking at how to use volume automation to create a panning automation effect in GarageBand for iPhone. So let's jump into it. Now, since I did a video on volume automation when GarageBand 2.1 was first released, one of the questions I've had a lot is, can we actually use automation to control panning between the left and the right channels? Now the short answer is no. Unfortunately, it's not supported in GarageBand for iOS. However, there is a trick or a hack that we can use that's going to allow us to actually do panning automation here in GarageBand. So let's get into it and I'll show you how to do that right now. So what we've got here is a very simple track with just a drum loop and a synth pad. So it sounds a little bit like this. Now what we want to do with this is we want to, and if I hit the mixing options here, we want to have this synth track start on the left and then gradually go all the way over to the right and then come all the way back to the left again. And it's a fairly common and easy to do kind of automation within a DAW or a digital audio workstation. If you're using a Mac or a PC, you'll be able to do this quite simply by just writing in the automation and uh, designing the curve yourself or simply riding that pan between the left and the right while you're recording or playing back the audio. However, uh, here on the iPhone, we don't have that same ability. So let's show you how we can do that now. If we come back here to our sound, we first thing we need to do is to duplicate that sound. So we'll tap on it, hit duplicate, which will duplicate our track. We now need to duplicate the actual audio. So we'll tap, tap again, hit copy, come to our second track, tap again, hit paste. So we've now just got two tracks of that same exact synth sound. Now what we need to do now is go into our mixer and if we go to the first track, you can see we're already panned hard to the left. If we go to our second track, we can now pan that hard to the right. And if we play that back now, all that's done is increased the volume because we've now got both of our tracks playing, one hard left, one hard right. So that doesn't actually do what we want to do, but the next step will help us actually get this done. Let's tap on the first piece of audio first, tap it again and hit the automation button. And this will open up our volume automation. Now, if you're new to volume automation, you can check out the other video that I have below, which will show you how to do volume automation. But I'll show you again here now because it's quite simple once you get the hang of it. So the first thing we need to do is tap on this to create that yellow line there. So this means automation is now active and we can actually make a change, but we also need to slide across this slider, which will actually turn on our ability to do automation. So we've got our eight bars here and the point that we want the automation to get to our center point is right here in the middle. So we're gonna tap once on the yellow line, close enough to, and now we can actually tap and drag this volume automation point right down to the bottom. It's not quite in the right spot, so we'll tap again and just move it slightly. That's about right. So it's about halfway through. So what this is going to do now on this track, on our left track, is to start at that full volume, gradually go all the way down to zero volume, and then go right back up to full volume. So that's part one of what we need to do for this panning automation. Now, and you're probably already ahead of me on this, you can tap on the second track, and do the exact reverse. So this is a little bit trickier because we now have to create points at the ends, which is a little bit harder to do, but if we tap just inside there, we can then pull this one down to the bottom and across, Oop, tap again and across. So we've got one point there, tap in the middle here, bring this up to the volume point that we want in the middle. Again, you can only go one direction at a time, and sometimes that happens, so don't worry. Um, so you can only go uh, left or right or up or down, which makes it a little bit fiddly to find the exact point that you want, especially on a small iPhone screen. We'll do that, go up a little bit, and for the purposes of this, that's pretty good. And then we'll do the same over here, we'll slide that down. And now we'll turn off this because every time we touch it, we're going to make some additional changes there. So now we've got the two volume automation curves uh, enabled and we'll play this audio back now and we'll show you exactly what this will sound like. So it'll be listening to the left and the right channels to see what this does to our audio.
There you go. So if you're listening on stereo headphones or stereo speakers, you will have heard that the audio starts on the left where we have this, uh, this piece of audio at full volume and this at zero volume. It then gradually, the left volume decreases as the right increases until we hit a center point. And then right here in the middle, it's all in the right because our right volume is full and our left volume is down at zero. It then continues on and goes right back to the left there. So that's a way to actually create a panning effect. And if you're watching, if you weren't listening or you don't have stereo uh, audio, you will have seen these volume faders actually move. And I'll show you that again in case you missed it. So there you go. You can see the volume faders are actually moving and showing you what's actually happening with that. And you can see that there's these little yellow outlines around the volume knobs to show you that that's actually happening. So we'll go done to come out of our automation. You can see that we have automation applied because we have these little yellow circles around our volume controllers. And as we scroll through the mix, you can see that our volume adjusts up and down to those automation points. And very faintly, you can see the little automation points that are in there behind. So I hope you found this useful because it's one of the questions I get a lot and it's one of the things that's not supported natively, but simply by duplicating, adding a second track, panning hard left and right, you can easily create some pretty cool panning effects here in GarageBand on iOS. And this works across iPhones, iPads, um, and any of the iOS devices that support GarageBand 2.1 or above.